Paula Dean, good morning. It's nice good morning, to see you. Dear. It's it's nice to be here. You were going to be here Friday. You basically said you were exhausted. You told uh, me you were distraught. Uh, How are you doing today? I was. I, I, it's hard for me to even find the word, Matt, that I was feeling. I was just overwhelmed. I I was in a state of shock. Still. Uh, yeah. Somewhat, yes, because uh, there's been some very, very hurtful lies said about me. I want, I want to get to specifics in a second, Paula. The, okay. the difference between Friday and now mm -hmm. is really on the business side of things. Yes, yes. Uh, Food but, Network, let me just say, Food Network says no more. Smithfield Foods said they're severing mm -hmm, ties with mm -hmm, you. QVC, mm -hmm. a big partner of yours, is weighing their options. Do you think you've been treated fairly by your business partners? They, uh, let me say this, uh, before we even get into that, the main reason I am here today, Matt, is it's important to me that I tell you and everyone out there how, what I believe and how I live my life. I believe that every creature on this earth, every one of God's creatures was created equal. No matter who you choose to go to bed at night with, no matter what church you go to pray, I believe that everyone should be treated equal. And that's the way I was raised, and that's the way I live my life. One of the headlines now, I read, Paula, yes. said that there, you know, said millions of dollars at stake for Paula Dean in today's show interview. So are you here mm -hmm. to express what you just said or are you here to stop the financial bleeding? I am here today because I want people to know who I am and people that have worked beside me, have walked beside me, know what kind of person I am. And I, I'm so distressed that people I've never heard of are all of a sudden experts on who I am. And you know what distresses me the very most, Matt? It, their words are being given weight. Well, they're having an impact, Paula. And Let's stay on the business side for a second. Okay. Do you think you've been treated fairly by the companies that have now distanced themselves from you? You are a cook, but you're also a businesswoman. You're the head yes. of a brand. You understand the yes. bottom line. Yes. You understand yes. image. Yes. Yes. Given the same circumstances, mm -hmm. would you have fired you? Would I have fired me? Knowing me? No. Uh, I'm very lucky in this aspect, Matt. I'm so fortunate that so many of my partners that know who I am have decided to stand by me. QVC has not dropped me. They say they're weighing their options. Well, there's, there's only two that has dropped me. And I am so very thankful for the partners that I have that believe in me. Right now as we sit here, it seems to me an informal jury of your peers and yes. your fans and your critics and your business associates yes. Yes. Are, are weighing the question, is Paula yes. Dean a racist? So I'll ask it to you bluntly. Are you a racist? No. No, I'm not. By birth, by choice, by no. osmosis, you don't feel you have no. racist tendencies? No. Uh, as a child, I was raised in a home that my father tolerated bad grades. He would tolerate maybe me breaking a curfew. But he told me, he said, girl, if I ever find out that you have behaved in a way where you think you're better than others, or have been unkind, your butt is going to be mine. All right, but you raised your right hand. Yes, I did. And you swore under oath yes, that I did. you have used a word that is the most mm -hmm. offensive word you mm -hmm. can use to describe an mm -hmm. African American. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about this wedding, this wedding mm -hmm. you wanted to plan, that plantation style wedding, whether you use the N word mm -hmm. or not. So, how does someone it use was. the N word, whether in anger mm -hmm. or in a joke or in private, the most offensive word to African Americans? and not be considered a racist. Yes. Um, the day I used that word, it was a world ago. It was 30 years ago. Uh, I had had a gun put to my head, a shaking gun. 
because the man that had the gun to my head, unbeknowing to me, was my customer at the main office. But didn't you also and admit, I Paul, that gone, you used the word I, on other occasions? No, no. So you have, other than no, that one time I, in the bank, a robbery right. attempt, you're telling me yes. you have never used the I have word. never. I never. They asked me in all of my 66 years on earth, had I ever used it. That man was so frightened that day he put the gun to my head because he was a customer at the main office. He was later caught. And I had gone out on a limb for him and gotten him alone, and he was frightened that I was so going to recognize him. So reports that you were asked in that deposition whether you had used the N-word on other occasions and said probably or of course are, in, are inaccurate? No. I answered the question truthfully. So you have never used the N-word other than that one occasion? No, it's just not, it's just not a part of... It's just not a part of who we are. Let me ask you about this part of the deposition. We were asked whether, you were asked whether using the N-word in telling a joke was hurtful. And you said, quote, I don't know, most jokes are about Jewish people, rednecks, black folks. I didn't make up the jokes they usually target, though, a group. I can't myself determine what offends another person. That last sentence gets me. I can't and, and myself I can't. determine what offends another person. Do you have any doubt in your mind? that African Americans are offended by the N-word? I don't know, Matt. I have asked myself that so many times because I, it's very distressing for me to go into my kitchens and I hear what these young people are calling each other. It's very, very distressing. You've never joined in on that language? No, absolutely not. It's very distressing. It's very distressing for me because I think that for this problem to be worked on, that these young people are going to have to take control and start showing respect for each other uh, and not throwing that word at each other. That it, is, it makes my skin crawl. I want to read you something that Columbia professor... John McWhorter wrote for Time Magazine's website. He is, by the way, African-American. Mm -hmm. He wrote, people of Dean's generation can neither change the past nor completely escape their roots in it any more than the rest of us. They can apologize and mean it as mm -hmm. Dean seems to. Mm -hmm. They also deserve credit for owning up to past sins as Dean did candidly when she could have easily, shall we say, whitewashed mm -hmm. the matter. Mm -hmm. Do you ever wish, Paula, that when you raised your right hand and swore to tell the truth in that deposition, that you'd fudged the truth? You wouldn't have been the first person who ever lied under oath. Given the fallout that you've seen over the last week, do you ever wish you'd fudged the truth? No, because uh, there's a couple of kinds of people that I don't like that I am prejudiced against, Matt, and that's thieves and liars. And I'll tell you a conversation that I had with my seven-year-old grandson the other day. He had spent the night with me and I allowed him to stay up later than his bedtime. And I said, Jack, honey, you got Guinea in trouble with mommy and daddy when you told them that I had let you stay up late. And he was playing with my iPad and he put that iPad down and he looked up at me and he said, Guinea, I don't tell lies. That's how I raised my children. That's how I was raised. And that's how my grandchildren are being raised. And I know, as well as I'm sitting here with you, I know how I treat people. I know my love for people. And I'm not going to sit here and tell everything that I have done for people of color. I'm not going to do it. Somebody else can tell that. There are a lot of people who've shown up but, at your restaurant in Savannah to support you. The yes, lines have grown. They've yes, gone to Twitter. Yes, They've shown their support for you yes. there. Some have called for a boycott of the Food Network for the way yes, they have dealt and I with don't, you. I don't want that. Is your salvation in that core group of fans? Can you rely on your base and focus, to use a political term, on that base and survive this? Um... I think that we can never underestimate 
the power of those voices because these people who have met me and know me and love me, they're as angry as the people are that are reading these stories that are lies. These people reading the stories that don't know me, they don't know they're not lies. They have no idea. So they are angry. And on that same coin, the people that know me, they're just as angry. And uh, I have apologized. I would never, never, and I can truthfully say in my life, I have never with any intention hurt anybody on purpose, and I never would. And there's not another side of this personality that we see on TV, this this warm, <laughs> no. sugary, Boy, sweet, just... even sassy girl of the South. There isn't a side of you that no. is intolerant and perhaps views others no. as, as not equal. No, no. You know, I, 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 no, what you see is what you get. I'm not an actress. I'm heartbroken. I'm thankful for my partners. Heartbroken, why? Heartbroken for yourself or your heartbroken. family? Heartbroken. I've had to hold friends in my arms while they've sobbed because they know what's being said about me. It's not true. And I'm having to comfort them and tell them it's going to be all right. If God got us to it, he'll get us through it. I've had wonderful support from Reverend Jackson. I've had wonderful support. And I tell you what, if there's anyone out there that has never said something that they wish they could take back. If you're out there, please pick up that stone and throw it so hard in my head that it kills me. Please, I want to meet you. I want to meet you. I is what I is, and I'm not changing. And I... There's someone evil out there that saw what I had worked for, and they wanted it. Let's end it on that. Paula Dean, thanks for being here this morning. I Thank appreciate you it. for having me, Matt. It means a lot to me, and it feels so strange to come to this wonderful, happy place where I've always come so happy, and I have these people believe these horrible, horrible lies when all you have to do is ask the people around me. Dean. Because I live my life the way I believe. And like I said, if you've never committed a sin, please pick up that rock, pick up that boulder, and hit me as hard as you can. We'll end it there. Paula Dean, thank you. And we're back right after this. <laughs>